<coughs> so, our next reader, let's see, maybe we should mix it up. Yeah, let's mix it up. Okay, All right, I think our next reader should be John Macker. All right. Thank you. <laughs> I'll um, just read just uh, you know a few new 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 things, old things. This is called uh, Cochise's Confession. History reinvents itself, dreaming of procreating tiny histories that reinvent themselves in mirrors of a vast pentagon. Thus, there is no waste. Yes, we are anarchists, tilting at fate, but in the Thomas Merton sense. But if you can't have a revolution in the hospice of your quiet mind, where the fuck will it happen? I turned Corso on to Merton, who said, meditation ain't shit without a decent bourbon. And I scan all the vices of the desert's dol dolorous miscellany. On some mornings, I swear, I'm crazier than Cervantes. Uh, this is called Nirvana Desperados. This is uh, kind of after Lou Welch, and uh, it's about Geronimo, where the Mexicans used to call him Geronimo. Thirty-six years ago, you left the turkey buzzard poem, you took your rifle, disappeared into the Sierras, your bones were stone mirrors no one could find, and the crows buried your effigy. You reaffirmed the art of clarity and poetry, reignited its beautiful crime for just a minute. And since then, the inmates have run the asylum, an assortment of dirty little wars, the scent of lilac wood smoke. In northern New Mexico, the stray light of yesterday's forked lightning ignited the sun-washed hills like a paralyzing kiss, while Geronimo sent his loose confederacy of Chiricahuas into the Sierra Madre camp, two, three at a time, to surrender. And they blinked away the twilight's rare rain, squatted near the flame, swapping stories, fire gigglers, lamented these end times and reignited the beautiful clarity of the rogue life full of grace. Nane, Cheto, Chihuahua, the others, warriors in the extreme, their shadow flames echo across the summer universe. Uh, this, my poem for Todd Moore, uh, it was in that anthology, Working the Wreckage of the American Poem, is called Crossing. And, uh, there was an old uh, Apache chief named uh, Mangus Coloradus, and he was like cooler than Miles Davis. <laughs> he really kept his people together. This was a little bit before Cochise and uh, Hull and Victoria and those guys. Anyway, he reminded me, uh, he reminded Art Good Times of Virgil. And he rem Todd Moore, as universal as he is, reminded me of Mangus Coloradus. He sits outside smoking, drinking, and breathing in the corpse sweet smell of the Aztec earth. It is pitch black, Mexico, the hard, pure universe of night and death. Mangus Coloradus, imperfect winter tool of the gods, astride a good pony, the rare snow last night, spitballed sideways, frosted the organ pipe, and each flake disappeared in his hand before it could declare its individuality. A brutal, brittle irony not lost on the aged chief. Soon, despite the hoarseness and dust furies of the drought scape, it'll be time to harvest the macho dark magic of the mezcal eastern slope of the Chiricahuas. And just north of the border, oblivion rhymes with vermilion, and not a soul was caught in the living act of crossing, just the winter-wired coyotes. And now in his 70s, dreams of one last score, riding off some fronteras, rancherias, renegade, remuda in the dark, because revenge this sweet must be Mexican, must taste mezcal, bitter on the tongue. And the dusk grows, glows saffron as the earth rotates lustily into hard shadow. <laughs> Yeah.
these aren't very funny. <laughs> I, you know, mine aren't very funny, but it doesn't seem to matter. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I think I'll, I think I'll do that. <laughs> this is called, uh, last uh, February I was uh, up here, last February, uh, attending a funeral, and I wrote a poem on the way back. After the funeral in Denver, driving south into New Mexico. It's February on the winter betrothed plains. I share an anonymous rest stop of the lady trucker and she cooks something in the parking space on a small grill. I can see her breath as she empties the used gray coals into the snow. And I walk to the fence line, and not far beyond it, near the Canadian River, they say a trail stop, some structure, a homestead, once raised a family, was a life-giving lone prairie light against the darkness, and was abandoned unceremoniously, maybe to the last straw of a blizzard of the coming of the railroad, Maybe to the last man standing over Johnny Cash singing, There Ain't No Grave. The night when there was no darkness worth its weight in damnation, more remorseless than this prairie dark. And the last of the whiskey, finished with a flourish in the gothic cold, rolled empty back into the black space that was once a well-lighted room. <laughs> It's another uh, light and light poem for the soul. This is called Savage Defectives. This is a poem inspired by the shooting in Phoenix. By that guy, that crazy guy who somehow slipped through the system and unloaded his uh, semi, his revolver into a crowd of people. Savage Defectives. A place in the desert once known for its heaven, its perfected Aprils, became a city of special hell. Not of Hieronymus Bosch, El Topo, Peckinpah, or chastened by Mephistopheles, but where cities go that are too fucking hot to die, that perpetually reconnoiter eternity for dollops of feral shade. There was a national moment of silence for the newly fallen. Language was riding shotgun down the hot hate speech streets inside. You can lead spoken word to metaphor, but you can't make it think. And blocks cavort across the landscape now with demystifying candor, and extended clips of the Sonoran chaos ferment in our common dream. Out here, heavy Moorish misting morning hangs low over the foothills, the white cowled peaks. And the winter temperatures adhere to lows only whispered, and beneath us all, a solstice underground juggernaut of soul speaks. Our guns wait for us in heaven to die. Thank you. Thank you. Just uh, a couple more here. This is a, my poem for Lorca called August in the Spanish Earth. These are the dog days of summer, and the heat has formed unholy allegiances. Lorca the pacifist was shot on an August day at the foot of the Sierra Nevada, and he prayed sweat into his own grave his murder unmarked and late for his funeral that never showed up. We leave memory to the indigenous ghostliness of the bones. To these last days of deliver, deliberate warmth, the field overgrown, the orchard harvested, the fallen peaches rot and sweet in the air, and the last of the deliberate angels give each other the first of last rites. But the words have risen and wandered away forever, in time from the Spanish earth. I'll just read a couple more here. Nine, I'll just read Doc and Tagalese Day. This is a poem about Doc Holliday. The guy and I got, uh, somebody who, who published this before his book came out couldn't, couldn't quite believe it. it was called Doc Antagoniste, which is a play on, on uh, Agoniste, which is not uh, uh, Antagoniste, it's just kind of a play on, on 
agony state, right? Mm -hmm. That's shot. Doc Holliday dreams of poems with scars on them. As the duende seeps deeper into the buried plumbing of his bones, another morning in Las Vegas, he wakes up on the wrong side of his species, concludes life is much easier on the spirit with a cough, a shave, a derringer, a drink, the ruddy complexion of the rain. All the dust of the southwest kicked up by the commerce of the prairies has a home in his lungs, and he's prepared to enter your bloodshot soul with the violent extremism of his affliction. Companionable.